Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. My name is Sergei Prichotska. I'm Associate Adjunct Professor at the Department of Material Science and Engineering at University of California, Los Angeles. And my today's talk entitled Accounts for Outst Outstanding, uh, Outstanding Antiballistic Performance of Titanium-Based Composite Laminates Made Using Powder Metallurgy. Um, this study was steered within a bigger project supported by NATO Agency Science for Peace and Security. Uh, and I would like to acknowledge the agency. I also would like to thank you, my collaborators group of Dr. Pavlo Markovsky from Kordumov Institute for Metal Physics, Ukrainian Academy of Science, group of Professor Jacek Januszewski from Military University of Technology of Poland, and group of Dr. Viktor Samarov from Senior Tech Incorporated, which is in US, as well as my group at UCLA. Uh, the goal of this project is development uh, of low-cost technology for making lightweight, high-strength titanium armor. A uh, suggested approach uses blended elemental powder metallurgy. We aim to obtain materials with strength level 1500 MPA and above while reducing the cost in two plus times compared to currently available uh, titanium armor. Well, uh, anti-ballistic uh, protection of the land systems, uh, mobility and protection of the fighting vehicles and military personnel is a paramount in success of defense and anti-terrorist operations. Armor is a protective cover that is used to prevent damage inflicted to an object or individual by direct contact with the weapon. Two most important uh, antiballistic properties of armor are penetration and fragmentation. Those require high hardness and strength from armor to eliminate sharpening effect of projectile as well as sufficient ductility in order to stop armor fragmentation. Uh, traditional armor materials is rolled homogeneous steel. However, its use uh, can increase um, overall weight of combat vehicle on about 20% that causes reduction in mobility, maneuverability, fuel efficiency, and requires stronger suspension, brakes, and more powerful engines. Currently, Army is in search of alternative lightweight uh, substitution for rolled homogeneous steel, and titanium uh, is very attractive in this list, um, primarily due to its high mass efficiency. Besides, it is corrosion resistant. Uh, it can be readily, fabrica readily fabricated in existing facilities and can be recycled. The only disadvantage of titanium-based armor is its high cost compared to steel uh, when produced using traditional ingot technology. A required combination of armor properties can be obtained on layered structures that combine at least two different materials with different properties. Uh, conventional engineering materials such as metal uh, absorb mechanical energy by plastic deformation. Composites or ceramics, on the other hand, absorb energy by fragmentation. For the back uh, layer, we suggest uh, use ductile alloy T64. And for the front layer, uh, we suggest to use uh, composites, metal matter composites on the base of this alloy reinforced with hard particles of titanium carbide or titanium borite. Our strategy for cost-efficient fabrication of titanium armor is to sidestep conventional and pricey ingot metallurgy. Suggested approach is used is based on use of blended elemental powder metallurgy of hydrogenated titanium. 
Uh, powder metallurgy is cost efficient. Besides, you can make laminates that combine layers with different properties, say high strength or high ductility, generally not compatible in one material. Uh, the major drawback is possible lowering of performance due to densification problems. Uh, we use titanium hydrate as the only tit titanium component in our process. It was shown that the presence of hydrogen in compact during sintering reaction reduces oxygen, chlorine content, and improves dent densification of the alloy. Uh, this table summarizes mechanical properties of uniform materials made earlier in this study. Uh, mechanical properties are strongly dependent on combined effect of residual porosity and the fraction of reinforcement. When the amount of reinforcement increases, we observe uh, expected drop in elongation However, the anticipated increase in strength is not taking place due to related porosity increase. We see some increase in Wicker's hardness. However, the yield strengths and ultimate tensile stress of composite are substantially lower to those of sintered alloy, as well as cast and rose fabricated, shown here for comparison. So overall, it doesn't look very encouraging result to begin with. However, we believe that the three-point band test is the most relevant to antiballistic performance uh, of armor. Uh, the top panel here shows result of a uh, three-point band test of uniform structure, and the lower panel shows result of B-layered structures. We can see significant increase in flexure stress and flexure strain laminates compared to uniform composite. And what is remarkable compared to uniform alloy T64. So we expect that laminates can demonstrate significant improvement in antiballistic performance compared to uniform structures. Uh, our ballistic tests prove the validity of expected behavior of laminates. Considering the kinetic energy of the bullet, it types, velocity, thickness of armor plate, uh, specific kinetic energy uh, required for armor piercing can be calculated. The two layered laminates from this study in the graph number one uh, shows significant improvement compared to uh, currently uh, suggested by industry titanium armor uh, fabricated using cast and rose technique shown here on the uh, chart number three. It worth mentioning that powder metallurgy fabrication we used uh, is about half cheaper compared to the cast and rose technology currently used for titanium armor. Uh, well, can we do it even better? In the second part of my talk, uh, I'll try to give the answer, and it is rather optimistic. Uh, the real steel bullet hardness um, is close to 700 HV, so we need hardness close to this for effective protection. The most logical way to increase the hardness of composite is to add more reinforcement compared to what was used before, say higher than 20%. Additional hardness rays can be achieved through the base alloy structure modification by using a specific heat treatment. Uh, the reinforcement content was uh, varied in this study up to 80%. Uh, the modification of the phase composition and morphology of the base alloy can be done through the high temperature edging. Our base alloy T64 has two phase lamellar alpha beta structure with beta phase made about 6% uh, and the average beta grain size close to 100 micrometers. The idea was to use high temperature edging to increase the beta phase amount and further transform it after quenching into a very fine alpha plus beta mixture. 
here we see the hardness change of cinderite composites in graph number one and after additional edging at 801,000 and degree on chart two and three. The risk of hardness with increase of carbide content was expected result. It reaches maximum at 40% of reinforcement. Above 50% hardness measurement wasn't possible due to sample crumbling. 11% of hardness increase is observed in the base alloy without the reinforcement, uh, only due to the heat treatment. We also see a greater hardness increase at higher edging temperature. Uh, from four different possible hardening mechanisms in metallic materials, we believe that the solid solution doesn't play a major role in our case uh, since we did modify the alloy chemistry. Dislocation density change is usually a result of plastic deformation, which also was not modified in this case uh, during composite fabrication. However, dislocation strengthening mechanism play a role in condition when composite get plastically deformed. So dislocation pile up uh, will take place at the interface boundaries. Such mechanism certainly take place during the hardness test. Uh, inclusion hardening is related to the dislocation work uh, that can go between hard particles living behind Oravan loops. That gives the Oravan strengthening and involve the interparticle spacing change. This mechanism works on a very small dispersed particles. However, when the particles of the second phase are getting bigger, the most likely mechanism turn to the dislocation pile up uh, and the interface boundaries play an uh, important role there. Um, and the structure dispersion, finally, we have possibility for structure dispersion uh, is related to the green size change and it can be expected and it can be expressed uh, by the whole perch uh, relationship. Um, here we see the structure of composite near uh, titanium carbide particle. After the sample high temperature edging, the composition of carbide particle is close to stoichiometric titanium uh, TIC only in the center of large particles. Whereas all smaller show rather TI to C composition. It suggests the carbon diffusion into the base alloy and formation of twice lower carbon content reinforcement phase, which causes its fraction increase by factor 1.6. Additional possibility become obvious from the analysis of EDS maps showing that carbon can leak into the alloy forming complex carbides titanium-3 aluminum carbon at amount slightly close to 10% uh, by volume, which contribute to further uh, hardness increase of the structure. Here we see the results of transmission Kikuchi diffraction of the same sample. The area of lift off shown here with a red section, and it covers all four major structural components in this structure. Uh, this uh, technique um, shows that alpha plus beta mix uh, with no doubts on its true morphology uh, and, the, and, and its contribution to the final structure hardness increase due to whole touch effect. I will not commit much time uh, uh, describing not very successful efforts on improving of mechanical properties through hot rolling or pressing. Uh, which is considered as one of the most common way of fixing the porosity issue uh, of the powder metallurgy products. In general, hot pressing has some potentials, but it is still very uh, limited. Uh, we believe that optimization of each layer structure and then layer bonding using either diffusion bonding, friction welding, or hot isostatic pressing is a feasible way to approach this problem. 
Uh, here are some of our results on diffusion bonding of composites with alloy. And this slide shows the result for the bonding using friction welding. Uh, the both friction welding and diffusion bonding works great to bond the structures. However, they have obvious limitations. Uh, say, major limitation of friction welding is that it doesn't affect the bulk structure of the bonded layer. Diffusion bonding helps with that, but it is limited with applied pressure and can fix the porosity in bulk very efficiently. The hot isostatic pressing uh, in this study was done on large size plates suitable for ballistic test. Individual floods of composites uh, with particles content 10, 20, and 40 percent uh, were fabricated using blended elemental powder metallurgy. Then the plates were heat bond using uh, listed parameters here. The plates performed at stunning action. Uh, the type bullet uh, AP 7.62 caliber uh, with the core hardness 870 HV were disintegrated upon uh, ballistic uh, test impact, uh, creating very minor dent in the plate shown here on the slide. Here are our results on porosity and the hardness measurements of composites before and after heat processing, showing uh, a correlation between those two characteristics and explaining the main outcome of the heat processing for our structures. So here is the results on hardness measurements and the results on porosity change after the heat processing. Uh, well, I'll skip um, uh, explanation of uh, different mechanism involved on hardening of those materials, and I'll be more than happy to answer uh, on uh, questions which might be related. I'll proceed to my conclusions. Um, superior under ballistic performance of composite laminates can be achieved by processing each layer individually, providing optimal properties of each layer, and further bonding the layers using diffusion bonding, friction welding, or hot isostatic pressing. The hot isostatic pressing bonding is the most proficient way to build the laminate structures of LO-264 reinforced with titanium carbide and titanium borite with superior hardness. In addition to layer bonding and properties improving due to structure aging, hot isostatic pressing is also effective in increasing hardness by reducing porosity that diffusion bonding and friction welding are not capable of. Well, thank you for your attention. Uh, using the occasion, I would like to express my support to my Ukrainian colleagues, their families, and all citizens of this country who demonstrate unprecedented bravery those days galvanizing the entire world. Uh, glory to Ukraine.